Eurofighter Typhoon The Eurofighter Typhoon is a twin-engine, canard delta-wing, multi-role fighter. The Typhoon was designed and is manufactured by a consortium of three companies. BAE Systems, Airbus Group and Alenia Aramaki, who conduct the majority of affairs dealing with the project through a joint holding company, Eurofighter Jagdluck Zug GmbH, which was formed in 1986. The project is managed by the NATO Eurofighter and Tornado Management Agency, which also acts as the prime customer. Development of the aircraft effectively began in 1983 with the Future European Fighter Aircraft Programme, a multinational collaborative effort between the UK, Germany, France, Italy and Spain. Due to disagreements over design authority and operational requirements, France left the consortium to independently develop the Dassault Rafale instead. A technology demonstration aircraft, the British Aerospace EAP, first took flight on August 6, 1986. The first prototype of the finalized Eurofighter made its first flight on March 27, 1994. The name of the aircraft, Typhoon, was formally adopted in September 1998. The first production contracts were signed that same year. Political issues in the partner nation significantly protracted the Typhoon's development. The sudden end of the Cold War reduced European demand for fighter aircraft, and there was debate over the cost and work share of the Eurofighter. The Typhoon was introduced into operational service in 2003. Currently, the type has entered service with the Austrian Air Force, the Italian Air Force, the German Air Force, the Royal Air Force, the Spanish Air Force, and the Royal Saudi Air Force. The Royal Air Force of Oman has also been confirmed as an export customer, bringing the procurement total to 571 aircraft as of 2013. The Eurofighter Typhoon is a highly agile aircraft, designed to be an effective dogfighter when in combat with other aircraft. Later production aircraft have been increasingly more well equipped to undertake air-to-surface strike missions and to be compatible with an increasing number of different armaments and equipment. The Typhoon saw its combat debut during the 2011 military intervention in Libya with the Royal Air Force and the Italian Air Force, performing reconnaissance and ground strike missions. The type has also taken primary responsibility for air defense duties for the majority of customer nations. Development Origins The UK had identified a requirement for a new fighter as early as 1971. The AST-403 specification, issued by the Air Staff in 1972, resulted in the Pages 96 conventional tail design, which was presented in the late 1970s. While the design would have met the Air Staff's requirements, the UK air industry had reservations as it appeared to be very similar to the McDonnell Douglas FA-18 Hornet, which was then well advanced in its development. The Pages 96 design had little potential for future growth and when it entered production it would secure few exports in a markets in which the Hornet would be well established. However, the simultaneous West German requirement for a new fighter had led by 1979 to the development of the TKF-90 concept. This was a crank delta wing design with Ford canard controls and artificial stability. Although the British aerospace designers rejected some of its advanced features such as vectoring engine nozzles and vented trailing edge controls, a form of boundary layer control, they agreed with the overall configuration. In 1979, Messerschmitt Volko Blochm, MBB, and British Aerospace, Bayer, presented a formal proposal to their respective governments for the ECF, the European Collaborative Fighter or European Combat Fighter. In October 1979 Dassault joined the ECF team for a tri-national study, which became known as the European Combat Aircraft. It was at this stage of development that the Eurofighter name was first attached to the aircraft. The development of different national prototypes continued. France produced the ACX. The UK produced two designs. The Pages 106 was a single-engine lightweight fighter, superficially resembling the JAS-39 Gripen, the Pages 110 was a twin-engine fighter. The Pages 106 concept was rejected by the RAF, 
on the grounds that it had half the effectiveness of the two-engined aircraft at two-thirds of the cost. West Germany continued to refine the TKF-90 concept. The ECA project collapsed in 1981 for several reasons including differing requirements, Dassault's insistence on design leadership, and the British preference for a new version of the RB199 to power the aircraft versus the French preference for the new Snecma M88. Consequently the Panavia Partners, MBB, Bayer and Air Italia, launched the Agile Combat Aircraft, ACA, program in April 1982. The ACA was very similar to the Barrett Pages 110, having a crank delta wing, canards and a twin tail. One major external difference was the replacement of the side-mounted engine intakes with a chin intake. The ACA was to be powered by a modified version of the RB199. The German and Italian governments withdrew funding, and the UK Ministry of Defence agreed to fund 50% of the cost with the remaining 50% to be provided by industry. MBB and Air Italia signed up with the aim of producing two aircraft, one at Walton and one by MBB. In May 1983, Bayer announced a contract with the MOD for the development and production of an ACA demonstrator, the Experimental Aircraft Program. In 1983, Germany, France, UK, Italy and Spain launched the future European Fighter Aircraft, FEFA, program. The aircraft was to have short takeoff and landing, STOL, and be on visual range, BVR, capabilities. In 1984 France reiterated its requirement for a carrier-capable version and demanded a leading role. West Germany, UK and Italy opted out and established a new EFA program. In Turin on August 2, 1985, West Germany, UK and Italy agreed to go ahead with the Eurofighter and confirmed that France, along with Spain, had chosen not to proceed as a member of the project. Despite pressure from France, Spain rejoined the Eurofighter project in early September 1985. France officially withdrew from the project to pursue its own ACX project, which was to become the Dassault Rafale. By 1986, the cost of the program had reached PS 180 million. When the EAP program had started, the cost was supposed to be equally shared by both government and industry, but the West German and Italian governments wavered on the agreement and the three main industrial partners had to provide PS 100 million to keep the program from ending. In April 1986, the Bayer EAP was rolled out at Bayer Wharton, by this time also partially funded by MBB, Bayer and Air Italia. The EAP first flew on August 6, 1986. The Eurofighter bears a strong resemblance to the EAP. Design work continued over the next five years using data from the EAP. Initial requirements were, UK 250 aircraft, Germany, 250, Italy, 165 and Spain, 100. The share of the production work was divided among the countries in proportion to their projected procurement, DASA, 33%, British Aerospace, 33%, Air Italia, 21%, and Constructions Aeronautica's SA, CASA, 13%. The Munich-based Eurofighter Jagdluxug GmbH was established in 1986 in order to manage development of the project and Eurojet Turbo GmbH, the alliance of Rolls-Royce, MTU Aero Engines, Fiat Avio, now Avio, and ITP for development of the EJ-200. The aircraft was known as Eurofighter EFA from the late 1980s until it was renamed EF-2000 in 1992. By 1990, the selection of the aircraft's radar had become a major stumbling block. The UK, Italy and Spain supported the Ferranti defence systems-led ECR-90, while Germany preferred the APG-65-based MSD-2000, a collaboration between Hughes, AEG and GEC Marconi. An agreement was reached after UK Defence Secretary Tom King assured his West German counterpart Gerard Stoltenberg that the British government would approve the project and allow the GEC subsidiary Marconi Electronic Systems to acquire Ferranti defence systems from its parent the Ferranti Group, which was in financial and legal difficulties. GEC thus withdrew its support for the MSD 2000. Testing
The maiden flight of the Eurofighter prototype took place in Bavaria on March 27, 1994, flown by DASA chief test pilot Peter Weger. On December 9, 2004, Eurofighter Typhoon IPA-4 began three months of cold environmental trials CET, at the Vitzel Air Base in Sweden, the purpose of which was to verify the operational behavior of the aircraft and its systems in temperatures between 25 and 31 DEGC. The maiden flight of instrumented production aircraft 7, IPA-7, the first fully equipped Tranche 2 aircraft, took place from EADS Manching Airfield on January 16, 2008. Procurement, Production and Costs The first production contract was signed on January 30, 1998 between Eurofighter GmbH. Eurojet and NETMA. The procurement totals were as follows, UK 232, Germany 180, Italy 121, and Spain 87. Production was again allotted according to procurement, British Aerospace, 37.42%, DASA, 29.03%, Air Italia, 19.52%, and CASA. 14.03%. On September 2, 1998, a naming ceremony was held at Farnborough, United Kingdom. This saw the Typhoon name formally adopted, initially for export aircraft only. This was reportedly resisted by Germany, perhaps because the Hawker Typhoon was a fighter bomber aircraft used by the RAF during the Second World War to attack German targets. The name Spitfire II. After the famous British Second World War fighter, the Supermarine Spitfire, had also been considered and rejected for the same reason early in the development program. In September 1998 contracts were signed for production of 148 Tranche 1 aircraft and procurement of long lead time items for Tranche 2 aircraft. In March 2008 the final aircraft out of Tranche 1 was delivered to the German Air Force with all successive deliveries being at the Tranche 2 standard. On October 21, 2008, the first two of 91 Tranche 2 aircraft, ordered four years before, were delivered to RAF Koningsby. In October 2008, the Eurofighter nations were considering splitting the 236 fighter Tranche 3 into two parts. In June 2009, RAF Air Chief Marshal Sir Glenn Torpy suggested that the RAF fleet might only be 123 jets, instead of the 232 previously planned. In spite of this reduction in the number of required aircraft, on May 14, 2009, British Prime Minister Gordon Brown confirmed that the UK would move ahead with the third batch purchase. The contract for the first part, Tranche 3A, was signed at the end of July 2009 for 112 aircraft split across the four partner nations, including 40 aircraft for the UK, 31 for Germany, 21 for Italy and 20 for Spain. These 40 aircraft were said to have fully covered the UK's obligations in the project by Air Commodore Chris Bushell, due to cost overruns in the project. The Eurofighter Typhoon is unique in modern combat aircraft in that there are four separate assembly lines. Each partner company assembles its own national aircraft, but builds the same parts for all 683 aircraft, including exports. Premium Erotk, Main Center Fuselage, EADS CASA, Right Wing, Leading Edge Slats, BAE Systems, Front Fuselage, including four planes, Canopy, Dorsal Spine, Tail Fin, Inboard Flaperons, Rear Fuselage Section, and Alenia Anamaki, Left Wing. Outboard flaperons, rear fuselage sections. Production is divided into three tranches, see table below. Tranches are a production funding distinction, and do not necessarily imply an incremental increase in capability with each tranche. Tranche 3 will most likely be based on late Tranche 2 aircraft with improvements added. Tranche 3 has been split into A and B parts. Tranches are further divided up into production standard capability blocks and funding procurement batches, though these do not coincide, and are not the same thing. For example, the Eurofighter designated FGR-4 by the RAF is a Tranche 1, Block 5. Batch 1 covered Block 1, but Batch 2 covered Blocks 2, 2B and 5. 
On May 25, 2011 the 100th production aircraft, ZK-315, rolled off the production line at Wharton. In 1988, the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for the Armed Forces told the UK House of Commons that the European fighter aircraft would be a major project, costing the United Kingdom about PS 7 billion. It was soon apparent that a more realistic estimate was PS 13 billion, made up of PS 3.3 billion development costs plus PS 30 million per aircraft. By 1997, the estimated cost was PS 17 billion. By 2003, PS 20 billion, and the in-service date, 2003, defined as the date of delivery of the first aircraft to the RAF, was 54 months late. After 2003 the Ministry of Defense refused to release updated cost estimates on the grounds of commercial sensitivity. However, in 2011, the National Audit Office estimated the UK's total program cost eventually hit PS 37 billion. By 2007, Germany estimated the system cost, aircraft and training, plus spare parts, at 120 million euros and said it was in perpetual increase. On June 17, 2009, Germany ordered 31 aircraft of Tranche 3A for 2,800 million euros, leading to a system cost of 90 million euros per aircraft. The UK's Committee of Public Accounts reported that the mismanagement of the project had helped increase the cost of each aircraft by 75%. Defence Secretary Liam Fox responded that I am determined that in the future such projects are properly run from the outset, and I have announced reforms to reduce equipment delays and cost overruns. The Spanish MOD has put the cost of their Typhoon project at €11.718 billion Euros as of December 2010 up from an original 9.255 billion euros and implying a system cost for their 73 aircraft of 160 million euros. Delays The financial burdens placed on Germany by reunification caused Helmut Kohl to make an election promise to cancel the Eurofighter. In early to mid-1991 German Defense Minister Volker Russ sought to withdraw Germany from the project in favor of using Eurofighter technology in a cheaper, lighter plane. Due to the amount of money already spent on development, the number of jobs dependent on the project, and the binding commitments on each partner government, Helmut Kohl was unable to withdraw. Russ's predecessors had locked themselves into the project by a punitive penalty system of their own devising. In 1995 concerns over workshare appeared. Since the formation of Eurofighter the workshare split had been agreed at 33-33-21-13, United Kingdom Germany Italy Spain, based on the number of units being ordered by each contributing nation, all the nations then reduced their orders. The UK cut its orders from 250 to 232, Germany from 250 to 140, Italy from 165 to 121 and Spain from 100 to 87. According to these order levels the work share split should have been 39-24-22-15 UK Germany Italy Spain, Germany was unwilling to give up such a large amount of work. In January 1996, after much negotiation between German and UK partners, a compromise was reached whereby Germany would purchase another 40 aircraft. The work share split was 43% for EADSMAS in Germany and Spain, 37.5% BAE systems in the UK, and 19.5% for Alenia in Italy. Your next major milestone came at the Farnborough Air Show in September 1996. The UK announced the funding for the construction phase of the project. In November 1996, Spain confirmed its order, but Germany delayed its decision. After much diplomatic activity between Germany and UK, an interim funding arrangement of DM 100 million, EU 51 million, was contributed by the German government in July 1997 to continue flight trials. Further negotiations finally resulted in Germany's approval to purchase the Eurofighter in October 1997. Upgrades In 2000, the UK selected the MBDA Meteor as the long-range air-to-air missile armament for her typhoons with an in-service date, ISD, of December 2011. In December 2002, France, 
Germany, Spain and Sweden joined the British in a $1.9 billion contract for Meteor on Typhoon, the Dassault Rafale and the Saab Gripen. The protracted contract negotiations pushed the ISD to August 2012, and it was further put back by Eurofighter's failure to make trials aircraft available to the Meteor partners. Meteor is now in production and first deliveries to the RAF are scheduled for Q4 2012 but full clearance on Typhoon is not planned until mid-2016. Eurojet is attempting to find funding to test a thrust vectoring nozzle TVN, on a flight demonstrator. Additionally, the RAF has sought to develop conformal fuel tanks CFT, for their Typhoons to free up underwing space for weapons and all Trans 3 aircraft are fitted to accept these tanks. Funding for recent upgrades have come from export customers. However, the four original partner nations have been reluctant to further invest in the program. None of the partner nations have confirmed an order for Trans 3 BS, which would have been optimized for future higher tempo air to air and strike operations, and Germany has cut its own orders short to avoid the model. If no orders are placed by mid-2014, the production lines will need to shut down. Design Airframe and avionics The Typhoon is a highly agile aircraft at both supersonic and low speeds, achieved through having an intentionally relaxed stability design. It is a quadruplex digital fly-by-wire control system providing artificial stability, Manual operation alone could not compensate for the inherent instability. The fly-by-wire system is described as carefree, and prevents the pilot from exceeding the permitted maneuver envelope. Roll control is primarily achieved by use of the wing flaperons. Pitch control is by operation of the foreplanes and flaperons, the yaw control is by rudder. Control surfaces are moved through two independent hydraulic systems, which also supply various other items such as the canopy, brakes and undercarriage. Powered by a 4000 Psi engine driven gearbox. Navigation is via both GPS and an inertial navigation system. The Typhoon can use Instrument Landing System, ILS, for landing in poor weather. The aircraft also features an enhanced ground proximity warning system based on the Tabram Terrain Referenced Navigation, TRN, system used by the Panavia Tornado. The Multifunctional Information Distribution System MITS, provides a Link 16 data link. The aircraft employs a sophisticated and highly integrated defensive aid subsystem named Praetorian, formerly called Eurodas. Praetorian monitors and responds automatically to air and surface threats, provides an all-round prioritized assessment, and can respond to multiple threats simultaneously. Threat detection methods include a radar warning receiver, RWR, and a laser warning receiver, LWR, only on UK typhoons. Protective countermeasures consist of chaff, JAF and flares, and electronic countermeasures, ECM, sweet and towed radar decoy, TRD. The typhoon features lightweight construction, 82% composites consisting of 70% carbon fiber composites and 12% glass reinforced composites, with an estimated lifespan of 6,000 flying hours. Cockpit The Eurofighter Typhoon features a glass cockpit without any conventional instruments. It incorporates three full color multifunction head down displays, MHDDs. The formats on which are manipulated by means of soft keys, XY cursor, and voice, direct voice input or DVI, command, a wide angle head up display, HUD, with forward looking infrared, FLIR, a voice and hands on throttle and stick, voice plus HOTAS, a helmet mounted symbology system, HMSS, a multifunctional information distribution system, MITS, a manual data entry facility, MDEF. Located on the left glare shield and a fully integrated aircraft warning system with a dedicated warnings panel, DWP. Reversionary flying instruments, lit by LEDs, are located under a hinged right glare shield. Needs of the user were given very high priority in the design of the cockpit, the layout and functionality was created through feedback and assessments from military pilots and a specialist testing facility. 
the pilot controls the aircraft by means of a center stick, or control stick, and left hand throttles, designed on a hand on throttle and stick, HOTAS, principle to lower pilot workloads. Emergency escape is provided by a Martin Baker MK 16A ejection seat, with the canopy being jettisoned by two rocket motors. The HMSS has been delayed for many years but should be operational by the end of 2011. The aircraft's standard G force protection is provided by the full cover anti G trousers, FCA GTs. This specially developed G suit provides sustained protection up to 9G. The Typhoon pilots of the German Air Force and Austrian Air Force wear a hydrostatic G suit called Libel, Dragonfly, Multi G Plus instead, which also provides protection to the arms, theoretically allowing for more complete G tolerance. In the event of pilot disorientation, the flight control system allows for rapid and automatic recovery by the simple press of a button. On selection of this cockpit control the FCS takes full control of the engines and flying controls, and automatically stabilizes the aircraft in the wings level, gentle climbing attitude at 300 knots, until the pilot is ready to retake control. The aircraft also has an automatic low speed recovery system, ALSR which prevents it from departing from controlled flight at very low speeds and high angle of attack. The FCS system is able to detect a developing low speed situation and to raise an audible and visual low speed cockpit warning. This gives the pilot sufficient time to react and to recover the aircraft manually. If the pilot does not react, however, or if the warning is ignored, the ALS takes control of the aircraft, selects maximum dry power for the engines and returns the aircraft to a safe flight condition. Depending on the attitude, the FCS employs an ALS a push, pull, or knife over maneuver. The Typhoon Direct Voice Input DVI, system utilizes a speech recognition module SRM, developed by Smith's Aerospace, now GE Aviation Systems, and Computing Devices, now General Dynamics UK. It was the first production DVI system utilized in a military cockpit. DVI provides the pilot with an additional natural mode of command and control over approximately 26 non-critical cockpit functions, to reduce pilot workload, improve aircraft safety, and expand mission capabilities. An important step in the development of the DVI occurred in 1987 when Texas Instruments completed the TMS 320C30 a digital signal processor, enabling reductions in the size and system complexity required. The project was given the go-ahead in July 1997, with development and pilot assessment carried out on the Eurofighter Active Cockpit Simulator at BAE Systems Wharton. The DVI system is speaker-dependent. That is, requires each pilot to create a template. It is not used for any safety-critical or weapon-critical tasks such as weapon release or lowering of the undercarriage, but is used for a wide range of other cockpit functions. Voice commands are confirmed by visual or oral feedback. The system is seen as a major design feature in the reduction of pilot workload. All functions are also achievable by means of a conventional button press or soft key selections. The functions include display management, communications, and management of various systems. EADS Defense and Security in Spain has worked on a new non-template DVI module to allow for continuous speech recognition, speaker voice recognition with common databases, for example British English, American English, etc. and other improvements. Sensors The Eurofighter operates automatic emission controls, EMCON to reduce the electromagnetic emissions of the current mechanically scanned radar. The Captor M was the first NATO radar with three rather than two working channels, one intended for classification of jammer and for jamming suppression. The German BW Plan 2009 indicated that Germany intended to equip retrofit their Eurofighters with the AESA Captor E from 2012, but the contract award has been delayed until at least mid-2014. In the meantime, a succession of radar software upgrades have enhanced the air-to-air -air capability of the Captor M radar. These upgrades have included the A2P program, initially UK only, 
and known as T-2P when ported to the Tranche 2 aircraft, which is being followed by R-2Q-T-2Q-R-2P was applied to eight German typhoons deployed on Red Flag Alaska in 2012. Synthetic aperture radar is expected to be fielded as part of the AESA radar upgrade which will give the Eurofighter an all-weather ground attack capability. The conversion to AESA will also give the Eurofighter a low probability of intercept radar with much better jam resistance. These include an innovative design with a gimbal to meet RAF requirements for a wider scan field than a fixed AESA. The coverage of a fixed AESA is limited to 120 degree azimuth and elevation. In May 2007, Eurofighter development aircraft 5 made the first flight with a Caesar demonstrator system, a development of the Euro radar captor incorporating active electronically scan array AESA, technology. Tranche 2 aircraft use the non-AESA mechanically scan Captor M which incorporates weight and space provisions for possible upgrade to Caesar, AESA, standard in the future. In July 2010, Eurofighter announced that the AESA radar would enter service in 2015. In June 2013, Finn Mechanicus Alexis Chris Bushell warned that the failure of European nations to invest in an AESA radar was putting export orders at risk. In November BAE responded that work on an AESA radar continued, in order to protect exports. On June 22, 2011, it was announced that the partner nations had agreed to fund development of the next generation of E-Scan Captor E-Radar, with entry into service planned for 2015. The British are pursuing an independent technology demonstrator program called Bright Adder, which will give the Typhoon an electronic attack mode among other things. Bright Adder is based on Contique's Arts radar demonstrator for the Tornado GR4 and could evolve into an alternative to the main E-Scan project or D-Scan Falter. The first flight of a Eurofighter equipped with a mass model of the Captor E occurred in late February 2014, with flight tests of the actual radar expected later that year. Tranche 3 Typhoons have the mechanical, electrical and cooling enhancements needed to operate the radar. The passive infrared airborne track equipment Pirate, system is an infrared search and track system IRST, mounted on the port side of the fuselage, forward of the windscreen. SELEX Galileo is the lead contractor which, along with Hales Optronics, System Technical Authority, and Technobit of Spain, make up the Euro First consortium responsible for the system's design and development. Eurofighters starting with Tranche 1 Block 5 have the Pirate. The first Eurofighter Typhoon with Pirate IRST was delivered to the Italian Aeronautica Militare in August 2007. More advanced targeting capabilities can be provided with the addition of a targeting pod such as the Leetening Pod. Pirate operates in two IR bands, 3 to 5 and 8 to 11 micrometers. When used with a radar in an air-to-air -air role, it functions as an infrared search and track system, providing passive target detection and tracking. In an air-to-surface role, it performs target identification and acquisition. It also provides a navigation and landing aid. Pirate is linked to the pilot's helmet-mounted display. Performance The Typhoon's combat performance compared to the F-22 Raptor and the upcoming F-35 Lightning II fighters and the French Dassault Rafale, has been the subject of much discussion. In March 2005, United States Air Force Chief of Staff General John P. Dumper, then the only person to have flown both the Eurofighter Typhoon and the Raptor, talked to Air Force Print News about these two aircraft. He said, in July 2007, Indian Air Force Su-30 MKI fighters participated in the Indra-Tanush exercise with Royal Air Force's Typhoon. This was the first time that the two jets had taken part in such an exercise. The IAF did not allow their pilots to use the MKI's radar during the exercise to protect the highly classified NO-11 M-bars. RAF Tornado pilot stated the Su-30 MKI had superior maneuverability. But the IAF pilots were also impressed by the Typhoon's agility. The Typhoon is capable of supersonic cruise without using afterburners, referred to as supercruise. Air Force's monthly gives a maximum supercruise speed of Mach 1.1 for the RAF FGR4 multi-role version. 
EADS describes an average supercross speed capability of about Mach 1.5 in an air policing role. As with the F-22, the Eurofighter can launch weapons while under supercross in order to extend their ranges via this running start. The Eurofighter consortium states their fighter has a higher sustained subsonic turn rate, sustained supersonic turn rate, and faster acceleration at Mach 0.9 at 6,100 meters (20,000 feet) than the Grumman F-14 Tomcat, McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle, General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, Dassault Mirage 2000, Dassault Rafale, Sukhoi Su-27, and Miquan MiG-29. In the 2005 Singapore evaluation, the Typhoon won all three combat tests, including one in which a single Typhoon defeated three RSAF F-16s, and reliably completed all planned flight tests. In July 2009, former Chief of Air Staff for the Royal Air Force, Air Chief Marshal Sir Glenn Torpy, said that the Eurofighter Typhoon is an excellent aircraft. It will be the backbone of the Royal Air Force along with the JSF. Radar Signature Reduction Features Although not designated a stealth fighter, Measures were taken to reduce the Typhoon's radar cross-section RCS, especially from the frontal aspect. An example of these measures is that the Typhoon has jet inlets that conceal the front of the jet engine, a strong radar target, from radar. Many important potential radar targets, such as the wing, canard and fin leading edges, are highly swept, so will reflect radar energy well away from the front sector. Some external weapons are mounted semi-recessed into the aircraft, partially shielding these missiles from incoming radar waves. In addition radar absorbent materials, RAM, developed primarily by EADSDASA, coat many of the most significant reflectors, such as the wing leading edges, the intake edges and interior, the rudder surrounds, and strakes. The Typhoon does not use internal storage of weapons. External mounting points are used instead, which increases its radar cross-section but allows for more and larger stores. According to the RAF, the Eurofighter's RCS is better than RAF requirements. Comments from BAE Systems suggest the radar return is around one quarter of that of the tornado it replaces. The Eurofighter is thought to have an RCS of less than one square meter in a clean configuration by author Doug Richardson, although no official value is available. The manufacturers have carried out tests on the early Eurofighter prototypes to optimize the low observability characteristics of the aircraft from the early 1990s. Testing at BAE's Wharton facility on the DA-4 prototype measured the RCS of the aircraft and investigated the effects of a variety of RAM coatings. Another measure to reduce the likelihood of discovery is the use of passive sensors, which minimizes the radiation of treacherous electronic emissions. While canards generally have poor stealth characteristics, the flight control system is designed to maintain the olive and trim and canards at an angle at which they have smallest RCS. Armament The Typhoon is a multi-role fighter with maturing air-to-ground capabilities. The initial absence of air-to-ground capability is believed to have been a factor in the type's rejection from Singapore's fighter competition in 2005. At the time it was claimed that Singapore was concerned about the delivery timescale and the ability of the Eurofighter partner nations to fund the required capability packages. Tranche 1 aircraft could drop laser-guided bombs in conjunction with third-party designators but the anticipated deployment of Typhoon to Afghanistan meant that the UK required self-contained bombing capabilities before the other partners. On July 20, 2006 a Pico Second 73M deal was signed for Change Proposal 193, CP193, to give an austere air-to-surface capability using GBU-16 Paveway 2 and Raphael Ultra-Electronics Leetoning 3 laser designator. Just for the RAF Tranche 1 Block 5 aircraft. Aircraft with this upgrade were designated Typhoon FGR-4 by the RAF. Similar capability will be added to Tranche 2 aircraft on the main development pathway as part of the Phase 1 enhancements P1A, SRP-10, will enter service in 2013 Q1 and adds the use of Paveway 4, e.g. BU-16 and the cannon against surface targets. P1EB, 
SRP-12, adds full integration with GPS bombs such as GBU-10 Paveway 2, GBU-16 Paveway 2, Paveway 4 and a new real-time operating system that allows multiple targets to be attacked in a single run. This new system will form the basis for future weapons integration by individual countries under the Phase 2 enhancements. A definite schedule has not yet been agreed, but will likely see the Storm Shadow and KEPD-350 cruise missiles integrated in 2015, followed by Brimstone anti-tank missiles. An anti-shipping capability is required by 2017, and such a capability is also important for potential export customers such as India. The Typhoon can accommodate two or BS-15 or three Marty OP under each wing but neither has been integrated yet. In addition to the missile armament options, the Typhoon also carries a specially developed variant of the Morsa BK-27 27mm cannon armament that was developed originally for the Panavia Tornado. This is a single-barrel, electrically fired, gas-operated revolver cannon with a new linkless feed system, capable of firing up to 1700 rounds per minute. There was a proposal on cost grounds in 1999 to limit this gun armament fit to the first 53 Batch 1 aircraft destined for the RAF, only on the basis that the guns would be used as ballast and not used operationally, but this decision was reversed in 2006. The table below gives an overview of weapons, which are compatible with the Typhoon and the hardpoints on which they can be employed. Not all weapons are fully integrated yet and more systems might be added in future production tranches. Operational History Entry into service On August 4, 2003, Germany accepted the first series production Eurofighter, GT-003. Also that year, Spain took delivery of its first series production aircraft. On December 16, 2005, the Typhoon reached initial operational capability, IOC, with the Italian Air Force. Its Typhoons were put into service as air defense fighters at the Grosseto Air Base, and immediately assigned to Quick Reaction Alert, QRA, at the same base. On August 9, 2007, the UK's Ministry of Defense reported that No. 11 Squadron RAF of the RAF, which stood up as a Typhoon Squadron on March 29, 2007, had taken delivery of its first two multi-role Typhoons. Two of 11 Squadron's Typhoons were sent to intercept a Russian Tupolev of 95 approaching British airspace on August 17, 2007. The RAF Typhoons were declared combat ready in the air-to-ground role by July 1, 2008. The RAF Typhoons were projected to be ready to deploy for operations by mid-2008. On September 11, 2008, the combined flying time of the five customer air forces and the industrial flight test program saw the aircraft pass the 50,000 flight hours milestone. On March 31, 2009, a Eurofighter Typhoon fired Namram whilst having its radar in passive mode for the first time. The necessary target data for the missile was acquired by the radar of a second Eurofighter Typhoon and transmitted using the Multifunctional Information Distribution System, MITS. In January 2011, the entire Typhoon fleet passed the 100,000 flying hours mark. In September 2013, the worldwide Eurofighter fleet achieved over 200,000 flight hours. At the time, 378 aircraft had been delivered, with 571 on order. United Kingdom Around April 25, 2008 a typhoon from 17 Squadron at RAF Coningsby, operating at the U.S. Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake Test Center in California, USA suffered extensive damage during landing when its landing gear did not deploy. Although no immediate cause was determined, it was speculated that pilot error may have been to blame. The National Audit Office observed in 2011 that the distribution of the Eurofighter's parts supply and repairs over several countries has led to parts shortages, long-time scales for repairs and the cannibalization of some aircraft to keep others flying. In September 2009, Four RAF Typhoons were deployed to RAF Mount Pleasant replacing the Tornado F-3S defending the Falkland Islands. 
the government of Argentina is understood to have made a formal protest. On March 18, 2011, British Prime Minister David Cameron announced that the UK would deploy typhoons, alongside Pinavia tornadoes, to enforce a no-fly zone in Libya. On March 20, 10 typhoons from RAF Koningsby and RAF Lucas arrived at the Gia del Col Air Base in southern Italy. On March 21, RAF typhoons flew their first ever combat mission while patrolling the no-fly zone. On March 29, it was revealed that the RAF were short of pilots to fly the required number of sorties over Libya and were having to divert personnel from typhoon training to meet the shortfall. On April 12, 2011, a mixed pair of RAF Typhoon and Tornado GR4 dropped precision-guided bombs on ground vehicles operated by Gaddafi forces that were parked in an abandoned tank park. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal Sir Stephen Dalton, revealed during the Royal Aeronautical Society's Aerospace 2011 conference in London, that each aircraft dropped one GBU-16 Paveway to 454 kg, 1,000 pounds, laser-guided bomb which struck very successfully and very accurately. The event represented a significant milestone in the delivery of multi-role typhoon. Target designation was provided by the tornadoes with their Leetening 3 targeting pods due to the lack of typhoon pilots trained in air-to-ground missions. The UK's then Defence Secretary Liam Fox admitted on April 14, 2011 that Britain's Eurofighter typhoon jets were grounded in 2010 due to shortage of spare parts. The RAF has been cannibalizing aircraft for spare parts in a bid to keep the maximum number of typhoons operational on any given day. The Ministry of Defense had warned the problems were likely to continue until 2015. In July 2012, UK Defense Secretary Philip Hammond suggested that a follow-on buy of F-35A aircraft would be determined by the Strategic Defense and Security Review SDSR, in 2015 with the aim of replacing the UK's typhoons around 2030. The UK is to decide what mix of manned and unmanned aircraft to replace its Eurofighters with sometime between 2015 and 2020. It was announced in December 2013 that No. 2 Squadron will be the 5th Typhoon Squadron and will convert from the Panavia Tornado and reform at RAF Lossiamuth from April 1, 2015. Italy on July 17, 2009, Italian Air Force Eurofighter Typhoons were deployed to protect Albania's airspace. On March 29, 2011, Italian Air Force Eurofighter Typhoons began flying combat air patrol missions in support of NATO's Operation Unified Protector in Libya. Exports The partner companies have divided the world into regions with BAE selling Typhoons to the Middle East. Alenia Anamaki pitching to Turkey, and EADS selling to Latin America, India and South Korea. Senior Vice President of Eurofighter Sales Peter Mote has said that the Eurofighter could provide a complementary capability to stealth fighters. Austria On July 2, 2002, the Austrian government announced the decision to buy the Typhoon as its new air defense aircraft the Typhoon having beaten the General Dynamics F-16 and the Saab JAS-39 Gripen in competition. The purchase of 18 Typhoons was agreed on July 1, 2003, and included training, logistics, maintenance, and a simulator. On June 26, 2007, Austrian Minister for Defense Norbert de Rabos announced a reduction to 15 aircraft. The first aircraft was delivered on July 12, 2007 and formally entered service in the Austrian Air Force. A 2008 report by the Austrian Government Oversight Office, the Rechnungshof, calculated that instead of getting 18 tranche 2 jets at a price of EU 109 million each, as stipulated by the original contract, the revised deal agreed by Minister de Rabos meant that Austria was paying an increased unit price of EU 114 million for 15 partially used tranche 1 jets. Austrian prosecutors are investigating allegations that up to 100 million euros were made available to lobbyists to influence the purchase decision in favor of the Eurofighter. Saudi Arabia On August 18, 2006 it was announced that Saudi Arabia had agreed to purchase 72 typhoons. 
In December 2006 it was reported in the Guardian newspaper that Saudi Arabia had threatened to buy French Rafales because of a UK serious fraud office investigation into the Al Yamama, the Dove defense deals which commenced in the 1980s. On December 14, 2006, Britain's Attorney General, Lord Goldsmith, ordered that the serious fraud office discontinue its investigation in the BAE system's alleged bribery to senior Saudi officials in the Al Yamama contracts, citing the need to safeguard national and international security. The Times has raised the possibility that RAF production aircraft will be diverted as early Saudi Arabian aircraft, with the service forced to wait for its full complement of aircraft. This arrangement would mirror the diversion of RAF tornadoes to the RSAF. The Times has also reported that such an arrangement will make the UK purchase of its tranche 3 commitments more likely. On September 17, 2007, Saudi Arabia confirmed it had signed a GBPS 4.43 billion contract for 72 aircraft. 24 aircraft will be at the tranche 2 built standard, previously destined for the UK RAF, the first being delivered in 2008. The remaining 48 aircraft were to be assembled in Saudi Arabia and delivered from 2011, but following contract renegotiations in 2011 it was agreed that all 72 aircraft would be assembled by BAE Systems in the UK with the last 24 aircraft being built to tranche 3 capability. Saudi Arabia is considering an order of 24 additional jets in the future. More recent reports suggest that number may be as high as 60 or 72 but this may have been superseded by Saudi Arabia's decision in August 2010 to purchase 84 new F-15 SAs. On September 29, 2008 the United States Department of State approved the sale, required because of a certain technology governed by the ITAR process which was incorporated into the midst of the Eurofighter. On October 22, 2008, the first typhoon in the colors of the Royal Saudi Air Force flew for the first time at BAE Systems Wharton Aerodrome, marking the start of the test flight program for RSAF aircraft. Following the official handover of the first Eurofighter Typhoon to the Royal Saudi Air Force on June 11, 2009, the delivery ferry flight took place on June 23, 2009. Since 2010, BAE Systems has been training Saudi Arabian personnel at their factory in Wharton in preparation for setting up an assembly plant in Saudi Arabia. By 2011, 24 tranche 2 Eurofighter Typhoons had been delivered to Saudi Arabia, consisting of 18 single-seat and 6 two-seat aircraft. After that, BAE and Riyadh entered into discussions over configurations and price of the rest of the 72 plane order. Deliveries resumed in early 2013, with the discussions still going on with four trainers and two more single-seat typhoons. Another two single-seat models were delivered in October 2013. As of October 25, 2013, Saudi Arabia has received 32 Eurofighter typhoons. Two more aircraft are to be delivered to Saudi Arabia by the end of 2013. On February 19, 2014, BAE announced that the Saudis had agreed to a price increase over the existing contract. Oman. During the 2008 Farnborough Air Show it was announced that Oman was in an advanced stage of discussions towards purchasing Typhoons as a replacement for its Sepak Hat Jaguar aircraft. Through 2010 Oman remained interested in ordering Typhoons though the Saab JAS-39 Gripen was also being considered. In the interim Oman ordered 12 additional F-16s in December 2011. On December 21, 2012. The Royal Air Force of Oman became the Typhoon's seventh customer when BAE Systems and Oman announced a deal for 12 Typhoons to enter service in 2017. Potential Exports Bahrain On August 8, 2013, BAE officials commented that the Royal Bahraini Air Force was considering buying the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Eurofighter Typhoon is being considered along with the JAS-39 Gripen, Dassault Rafale, and F-35 Lightning II for Bahrain's future fighter needs. Canada In December 2012, 
the Canadian government decided that F-35 costs were much higher than earlier anticipated and hence are looking at the Eurofighter as well as four other fighters to replace their aging CF-18s. As of January 2014 it seems unlikely that a decision on a replacement would be taken before the next federal election in October 2015. Denmark The Royal Danish Air Force needs to replace its aging F-16 AMs. Besides Eurofighter Typhoon there are three other contestants, the Swedish Saab 39 Gripen NG, Boeing's Super Hornet and F-35 Lightning II, Joint Strike Fighter. Denmark is a level 3 partner in the JSF project, and has already invested 200 million US dollars. The final selection will be made in mid-2015 where 24 to 30 fighters are expected. Malaysia In December 2009, BAE Systems announced plans to market the Typhoon to the Royal Malaysian Air Force, RMAF, to replace its Micron MiG-29 nanoseconds. According to the Regional Director Business Development Dave Potter, the Typhoon's multi-role capabilities allow it to replace the MiG-29N. Other contenders include Boeing FA-18EF Super Hornet, Boeing F-15, Dassault Rafale, JAS-39 Gripen NG, Sukhoi Su-35, and Lockheed F-16CD Block 52 Fighting Falcon. Peru on February 4, 2013 Spain announced a proposed sale of 18 Tranche 1 aircraft to Peru, at a reported value of EU $45 million, $61 million, each. The intention is to transfer aircraft currently in Spanish service within a year of contract signing. Talks had been ongoing since November 2012 to boost the depleted Peruvian Air Force, and the proposal was formally submitted in mid-January 2013. The Eurofighter airframes have approximately 600 flight hours. Poland Poland is planning to purchase 64 multi-role combat aircraft from 2021 in an update to the country's modernization plans, it has been revealed. The new fighters will replace the Polish Air Force's fleet of Sukhoi Su-22M4 K ground attack aircraft and Mikwain MiG-29 Fulcrum A fighter aircraft. Planned open tender procedure could include F-35 Lightning II, JAS-39 Gripen EF, the newest variants of Eurofighter Typhoon and Dassault Rafale, and Boeing's F-A-18 EF Advanced Super Hornet. Qatar The Qatar Amiri Air Force is, as of January 2011, evaluating the Typhoon together with the Lockheed Martin F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, the Boeing FA-18EF Super Hornet, the Boeing F-15 and the Dassault Rafale to replace its current inventory of Dassault Mirage 2000-5s. The total order for 24 to 36 aircraft was to be decided on by the end of 2012. Serbia In 2010, the government of Serbia displayed open interest in the Eurofighter and competing products. In June 2013, Defense Minister Aleksandr Vucic suggested that Serbia might purchase six MiG-29 meters per meter two instead. Failed bids Greece In 1999, the Greek government agreed to acquire 20 Typhoons in order to replace its existing second-generation combat aircraft. The purchase was put on hold due to budget constraints largely driven by other development programs and the need to cover the cost of the 2004 Summer Olympics. In June 2006 the government announced a EU 22 billion multi-year acquisition plan intended to provide the necessary budgetary framework to enable the purchase of a next-generation fighter over the next 10 years and the typhoon was under consideration to fill this requirement. In December 2011 it was announced that the Eurofighter Consortium office in Greece was to close because Greece would not be in a position to order any new aircraft before 2018. India Eurofighter was one of the six aircraft competing for the Indian MRCA competition for 126 multi-role fighters. In April 2011, the Indian Air Force IAF, shortlisted the Dassault Rafale and Eurofighter Typhoon for the $10.4 billion US contract. On January 31, 2012, 
the IAF announced the Rafale as the preferred bidder in the competition. In February 2014, it was reported that contracts are expected to be signed in the next fiscal year, not before six months after the new government takes charge after the elections. Japan In March 2007, Jane's Information Group reported that the Typhoon was the favorite to win the contest for Japan's next-generation fighter requirement. The other competitors then were the F-A-18 EF Super Hornet and McDonnell Douglas F-15 E Strike Eagle. On October 17, 2007, Japanese Defense Minister Shigeru Ishiba confirmed that Japan may buy the Typhoon. Although the F-22 Raptor was in his words exceptional, it was not absolutely necessary for Japan, and the Typhoon was the best alternative. The F-22 is currently unavailable for export per U.S. law. During a visit to Japan in June 2009, Andy Latham of BAE pointed out that while F-22 exports were restricted to keep advanced military technology from falling into the wrong hands, selling the Typhoon would take a no-black-box approach, that is that even licensed production and integration with Japanese equipment would not carry the risk of leakage of restricted military technology. In July 2010, it was reported that the Japan Air Self-Defense Force favored acquiring the F-35 ahead of the Typhoon and the F-A-18 EF to fulfill its FX requirement due to its stealth characteristics, but the Defense Ministry was delaying its budget request to evaluate when the F-35 would be produced and delivered. David Howell of the UK Foreign Office has suggested that Japan could partner with Britain in the continuing development of the Eurofighter. On December 20, 2011, the Japanese government announced its intention to purchase 42 F-35s. The purchase decision was influenced by the F-35 stealth characteristics, with the Defense Minister Yasuo Ikikawa saying, there are changes in the security environment and the actions of various nations and we want to have a fighter that has the capacity to cope. Singapore in 2005 the Eurofighter was a contender for Singapore's next-generation fighter requirement competing with the Boeing F-15SG in the Dassault Rafale. The Eurofighter was eliminated from the competition in June 2005 and the F-15SG was selected in September 2005. South Korea In 2002, the Republic of Korea Air Force ROKAF, chose the F-15K Slam Eagle over the Dassault Rafale, Eurofighter Typhoon and Sukhoi Su-35 for its 40 aircraft FX Phase I fighter competition. In 2012-2013, the Typhoon competed with the Boeing F-15SE Silent Eagle and the F-35 for the ROKAF's FX Phase III fighter competition. In August 2013 it was announced that the F-15SE was the only remaining candidate, However the award was cancelled and in November 2013, it was announced that the ROKAF will purchase 40 F-35As. Switzerland In February 2007, it was reported that Switzerland was considering the Eurofighter, the Rafale and the Saab JAS-39 Gripen to replace its Northrop F-5 Tiger IIs. A one-month evaluation started in October 2008 at Emin Air Force Base consisting of approximately 30 evaluation flights. On November 30, 2011 the Swiss Federal Council announced that it was planning to buy 22 Gripen NGs due to its lower acquisition and maintenance costs. A leaked Swiss Air Force evaluation report revealed that the Rafale won the competition on technical grounds and Dassault offered to lower the price for 18 Rafales. Turkey Turkey was considering a purchase of Eurofighter, but in 2009 it decided to purchase a larger number of F-35s and it has subsequently stated that Eurofighter is off Turkey's agenda. Norway Norway considered purchasing the Eurofighter, but in 2012 signed the largest public procurement project in the nation's history, worth $10 billion, for the F-35A. United Arab Emirates In November 2012, the UK government announced the formation of a formal defence and industrial partnership with the United Arab Emirates, paving the way for potential typhoon sales with BAE systems. 
On December 19, 2013 it was announced that UAE had decided not to proceed with the deal for the supply of defense and security services, including the supply of Typhoon aircraft. Variants The Eurofighter is produced in single-seat and twin-seat variants. The twin-seat variant is not used operationally, but only for training. The aircraft has been manufactured in three major standards. 7 Development Aircraft, DA, 7 Production Standard Instrumented Production Aircraft, IPA, for further system development and a continuing number of series production aircraft. The production aircraft are now operational with the partner nation's air forces. The Tranche 1 aircraft were produced from 2000 onwards. Aircraft capabilities are being increased incrementally, with each software upgrade resulting in a different standard known as blocks. With the introduction of the Block 5 standard, the A2 retrofit program began to bring all Tranche 1 aircraft to that standard. Operators Austrian Air Force, 15 delivered. Erberhunger Schwader, Erberhunger Schwader, German Air Force, 143 ordered, of which 112 have been delivered as of December 2013. Jagdgeschwader 73 Stinhoff, Jagdgeschwader 74, Jagdbombergeschwader 31 Boilk, Jagdgeschwader 73 Stinhoff, Jagdgeschwader 74, Jagdbombergeschwader 31 Boilk, Italian Air Force, 96 ordered, of which 71 have been delivered as of November 2013. 40 Stormo, Grossetto. 9 Ogruppo Caccia. 20 Ogruppo Caccia OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation. 36 O Stormo, Jai Dalkol. 10 Ogruppo Caccia, 12 Ogruppo Caccia. 37 O Stormo, Trapani. 18 Ogruppo Caccia, 4 O Stormo, Grossetto. 9 Ogruppo Caccia, 20 Ogruppo Caccia OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation. 9 Ogruppo Caccia. 20 Ogruppo Caccia OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation, 36 O Stormo, Jai Delcol. 10 Ogruppo Caccia, 12 Ogruppo Caccia, 10 Ogruppo Caccia, 12 Ogruppo Caccia, 37 O Stormo, Trapani. 18 Ogruppo Caccia, 18 Ogruppo Caccia, Royal Saudi Air Force, 72 ordered of which 32 have been delivered as of November 2013, Spanish Air Force, 73 ordered, of which 51 have been delivered as of November 2013. Al 11, Seville Moron Air Base. 111 Operational Squadron, 113 Squadron, OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation. Al 14, Albast Los Lenos Air Base. 142 Operational Squadron. Al 11, Seville Moron Air Base. 111 Operational Squadron, 113 Squadron, OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation. 111 Operational Squadron, 113 Squadron, OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation. Al 14, Albast Los Lenos Air Base. 142 Operational Squadron, 142 Operational Squadron. Royal Air Force, 160 ordered, of which 115 have been delivered as of November 2013. RAF Coningsby, Lincolnshire, England. No. 3 Squadron RAF, No. 11 Squadron RAF, No. 29 Squadron RAF OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation, No. 41 Squadron RAF Test and Evaluation Squadron. RAF Lucas, Fife, Scotland. Number 1 Squadron RAF, Number 6 Squadron RAF. RAF Mount Pleasant, East Falkland, Falkland Islands. Number 1435 Flight RAF, Falkland Islands. Past Units. Number 17 Squadron RAF OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation, RAF Coningsby, Lincolnshire, England. Number 3 Squadron RAF, Number 11 Squadron RAF. Number 29 Squadron RAF OCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation, Number 41 Squadron RAF Test and Evaluation Squadron, Number 3 Squadron RAF, Number 11 Squadron RAF.
No. 29 Squadron Array FOCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation, No. 41 Squadron Array F Test and Evaluation Squadron, RAF Lucas, 5, Scotland. No. 1 Squadron Array F, No. 6 Squadron Array F, No. 1 Squadron Array F, No. 6 Squadron Array F, RAF Mount Pleasant, East Falkland, Falkland Islands. No. 1435 Flight Array F, Falkland Islands, No. 1435 Flight Array F, Falkland Islands, Past Units. No. 17 Squadron Array FOCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation, No. 17 Squadron Array FOCU Tactical Pilot Training and Evaluation, Royal Air Force of Oman, 12 ordered. Accidents on November 21, 2002, the Spanish twin-seat Eurofighter prototype DAR-6 crashed due to a double-engine flameout caused by surges of the two engines at 45,000 feet. The two crew members escaped unhurt and the aircraft crashed in a military test range near Toledo, some 70 miles 110 kilometers, from its base at Gitaif, on August 24, 2010. A Eurofighter aircraft crashed at Spain's Moron Air Base moments after takeoff for a routine training flight. It was being piloted by a lieutenant colonel from the Royal Saudi Arabian Air Force, who was killed, and a Spanish Air Force major, who ejected safely. Following this incident the German Air Force grounded its 55 planes on September 16, 2010, amidst concerns that after ejecting successfully the pilot had fallen to his death. In response to the investigation of the crash, the RAF temporarily grounded all Typhoon training flights on September 17, 2010. Quick reaction alert duties were unaffected. On September 21, the RAF announced that the harness system had been sufficiently modified to enable routine flying from RAF Koningsby. The Austrian Air Force also said that all its aircraft had been cleared for flight. On August 24, 2010, the ejection seat manufacturer Martin Baker commented. Under certain conditions, the quick release fitting could be unlocked using the palm of the hands, rather than the thumb and fingers and that this posed a risk of inadvertent release, and added that a modification had been rapidly developed and approved to eliminate this risk, and was being fitted to all Typhoon seats. Aircraft on display Eurofighter DAR-2 Typhoon Serial number ZH588, is on display at the Royal Air Force Museum London. This aircraft is one of seven EF-2000 development aircraft built by the Eurofighter partner companies, and was used for flight testing. The aircraft was delivered by road on January 22, 2008. Engineers from RAF Koningsby and RAF St. Athen assembled the aircraft for display. It is hanging in the museum's Milestones of Flight Exhibition Hall. The first development aircraft Eurofighter DAR-1 can be seen at the Deutsches Museum Flugwaffschleischem at Oberschleischem Airport in the north of Munich. Its first flight took place in 1994 and it was handed over to the museum in 2008. In 2009 Eurofighter DAR-4, serial number ZH-590, went on display at the Imperial War Museum Duford in the UK having been given to the museum by the Ministry of Defence in 2008. It is exhibited as part of the museum's airspace gallery, as an example of the development of aircraft technology. One of the engines from this aircraft, which have both now been removed, will be used in the Bloodhound SSC land speed record vehicle. Specifications General characteristics Crew, 1, operational aircraft, or 2, training aircraft, length 15.96 meters, 52.4 feet, wingspan, 10.95 m, 35.9 feet, height, 5.28 m, 17.3 feet, wing area, 51.2 m2, 551 square feet, empty weight, 11,000 kilograms, 24,250 pounds, loaded weight, 16,000 kilograms, 35,270 pounds, max takeoff weight, 23,500 kilograms, 51,800 pounds, power plant, 2x Eurojet EJ200 after burning turbofan, dry thrust, 60 kilonewtons, 
13,490 pound forces, each, thrust with afterburner, greater than 90 kN, 20,230 pound forces, each, dry thrust, 60 kN, 13,490 pound forces, each, thrust with afterburner, greater than 90 kN, 20,230 pound forces, each, fuel capacity, 5,000 kg, 11,020 pounds, internal. Performance. Maximum speed. At altitude, Mach 2 class, at sea level, Mach 1.25, 1,470 km per hour or 910 miles per hour, supercruise, Mach 1.5, at altitude, Mach 2 class, at sea level, Mach 1.25, 1470 km per hour or 910 miles per hour supercruise mach 1.5 range 2900 km 1800 miles combat radius ground attack low 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 601 km 325 mi ground attack high low high 1389 km 750 mi Air defense with 3 hour combat air patrol, 185 km, 100 mi, air defense with 10 minute loiter, 1389 km, 750 mi, ground attack, low low low, 601 km, 325 mi, ground attack, high low high, 1389 km, 750 mi, air defense with 3 hour combat air patrol, 185 km, 100 mi, air defense with 10 minute loiter, 1389 km, 750 mi, ferry range, 3790 km, 2350 miles, with 3 drop tank, service ceiling, 16765 m, 55003 feet, up to 64000 to 70000 feet, absolute ceiling, 19,812 m, 65,000 feet, rate of climb, greater than 350 meters per second, 62,000 feet per minute, wing loading, 312 kilograms per meter to, 63.9 pounds per foot to, thrust weight, 1.15, interceptor configuration, G limits, plus 9 slash, 3 G, breaks off to take off acceleration, less than 8 seconds, Breaks off to supersonic acceleration, less than 30 s. Breaks off to Mach 1.6 at 11,000 m, 36,000 feet, less than 150 s. Armament Guns, 1x 27 mm Morza BK-27 revolver cannon with 150 rounds. Hard points, total of 13, 8x under wing. And 5x under fuselage pylon stations. Holding up to 7,500 kilograms, 16,500 pounds, of payload. Typical multi-role configuration for a tranche 2P1E would be 4X AMRAM, 2X ASRAM IRIS T, 4X ICBU 16 slash PAVEWAY IV, 2X 1000 liter supersonic fuel tanks and a targeting pod. Missiles. Air to air missiles. AIM-120 AMRAM. AIM 120C 5 sevenths planned for P2E, AIM 132 ASRAM, AIM 9 Sidewinder, Iris T, MBDA Meteor, planned for EP2, in service in 2018. Air to surface missiles AGM 65 Maverick, in the future, AGM 88 Harm, in the future, Brimstone, planned for P2E, in service in 2020, Taurus KEPD 350. Probably P2EB, in service in 2018, Storm Shadow Skull PG, probably P2EB, in service in 2018, air-to-air missiles. AIM-120 AMRAM, AIM-120C 5 sevenths planned for P2E, AIM-132 ASRAM, AIM-9 Sidewinder, Iris T, MBDA Meteor, planned for EP2, in service in 2018, AIM-120 AMRAM, AIM 120C 5 sevenths planned for P2E, AIM 132 ASRAM, AIM 9 Sidewinder, Iris T, MBDA Meteor, planned for EP2, in service in 2018, air to surface missiles. 
AGM-65 Maverick, in the future, AGM-88 Harm, in the future, Brimstone, planned for P2E, in service in 2020, Taurus KEPD-350, probably P2EB, in service in 2018, Storm Shadow Skull PG, probably P2EB, in service in 2018, AGM-65 Maverick, in the future, AGM-88 Harm, in the future, Brimstone, planned for P2E, in service in 2020, Taurus KEPD-350, probably P2EB, in service in 2018, Storm Shadow Skull PG, probably P2EB, in service in 2018, Bombs. Paveway 2 3 Enhanced Paveway Series of Laser Guided Bombs, LGBs, 500 pounds Paveway 4, P1E, 2013, P2E will allow supersonic delivery, small diameter bomb, planned for P2E, Joint Direct Attack Munition, JDAM, in the future, Hope HOSBO, in the future, Paveway 2 3 Enhanced Paveway Series of Laser Guided Bombs, LGBs, 500 pounds Paveway 4, P1E, 2013, P2E will allow supersonic delivery, small diameter bomb, planned for P2E, joint direct attack munition, JDAM, in the future, Hope HOSBO, in the future, others. Flares infrared decoys dispenser pod, chaff pods, electronic countermeasures, ECM, pods, Leetoning 3 laser targeting pod, up to three drop tanks for ferry flight or extended range loitering time. Flares infrared decoys dispenser pod. Chaff pods. Electronic countermeasures. ECM. Pods. Leetoning three laser targeting pod. Up to three drop tanks for ferry flight or extended range loitering time. Avionics. Euro radar capture radar. Passive infrared airborne tracking equipment. Pyrex.